Hey everybody. So today, a little topic on one of the many nuance areas to think about when programming workouts. Programming workouts is always just a, a topic that people are fascinated by, and so happy to chat about it every now and then. And this is something that popped into my, into my mind yesterday as I was walking out into the garage to work out. So yesterday's workout of the day for Lynchpin was a hero workout named Ryan. There's a good chance that you haven't heard of Ryan. It doesn't pop up that frequently, but it should. It's, it's a bruiser. So Ryan is for a young firefighter that lost his life. And the Ryan workout is five rounds for time of seven ring muscle-ups and 21 burpees. So there's a lot of volume in that workout, right? Five rounds for time, 35 ring muscle-ups in there, and then 105 burpees. And anyone who's been around CrossFit for a bit knows that there's a lot of interference in both of those movements. And so the burpees aren't going to make the muscle-ups any easier and vice versa. And on top of that, they're not just regular burpees. They're not over the box and not over a barbell or anything like that. They're just regular old school burpees. Get on the ground, get yourself off the ground. But the twist for the burpees with Ryan is that at the end of each one, you're supposed to jump up and slap or tap something one foot above your standing reach. So... You know, a lot of us can get really used to just jumping an inch or two off the ground, maybe over the barbell, etc. Ryan wants you to jump one foot into the air after each burpee, so it's an it's a complete game changer, and it's a rugged workout. And in full disclosure, yesterday with just kids, life, schedules, stuff to do, pregnant wife, just... Things piled up a bit, uh, sleep wasn't going that great, and I was not in the mood walking out into the gym for just a slog, miserable gut check of a workout. So I already was thinking about not running the clock or just making my way through it casually, because who's kidding who? You're still not going to be shortchanged if you casually do 35 ring muscle-ups and 105 burpees. Fitness will still be achieved but it will help keep my sanity since I just kind of wasn't feeling like a fire-breathing dragon yesterday. So I was, I was contemplating those things, and as I walked out, my mind just started thinking about the workout and thinking about ways to play with the workout and experiment with it a bit. And that is where I'm going with this video here, which is if you have a love of programming or you want to try to create some cool workouts, and I shouldn't say cool, don't worry about creating cool workouts. Worry about creating effective workouts. So if you want to create some effective workouts, I at least anyway, I get a lot of ideas for workouts or how to tweak or modify things actually while I'm working out. So I'm experiencing something, I'm feeling something, I'm feeling how one movement plays with another movement and that inevitably, I just can't shut my brain off, that pops something into my head about, oh, well, what if we tweaked this? Or what if instead of hang power cleans, it was this? Or what if the loading changed to this? Or what if it went from this many rounds that whatever it happens to be, I get a lot of inspiration and ideas while I'm huffing and puffing during workouts. So very frequently during any workout, um, oh, well, the clock's running, whoop de doo I get these ideas, I don't want to forget these ideas, so I'll just walk over to the dry erase board, scratch down whatever it was that popped into my head, so that once the workout's done, I, I have that, and I can go back and reference it, take it inside, transfer it onto my computer, save it for a rainy day, and, and make sure that it makes an appearance, or play with it a bit more. And that happened not only yesterday during Ryan, but even as I was warming up, getting ready to attack the workout. Attack, shouldn't say attack, do the workout. And what popped into my head was, okay, contemplating doing it at a casual pace, especially because I also knew that today on Lynchman we had interval work. So I wanted to be able to bring the heat today. So probably not going to bring the heat two days in a row. So I was like, okay, Ryan's going to be done casually on Monday, Tuesday interval work, you know, be a little rested, feel pretty good, bring the heat. So that was also intertwined in my decision. So I was like, okay, 
I'm going to do it at a slower pace, I'm not going to try to kill myself. But then I also thought, well, what's another way just to, just to play with this thing? Mix it up a little bit for some variance. I'm already not going to run the clock is what I, what I, was, is what I was feeling. And I was like, you know what? Love ring rows. Everybody should do more ring rows. I was going to do low ring muscle-ups because I can't do full swing high ring muscle-ups in my garage. So I was already going to do low ring muscle-ups. I said, you know what? Maybe I'll just do ring rows. That would be kind of a... I think everybody needs more ring rows. I think they're a fantastic movement. So I was like, okay, maybe I'll do some of those. I was like, well, seven per round, depending upon the angle of my body, it might not be enough, you know, since I'm taking out the ring muscle-up portion. I said, all right, well, I'll put my feet up on a box, and that's what I'll do. So I'll do ring rows, feet elevated, so my body's basically parallel to the ground, and anyone who's done ring rows like that knows that they are very challenging, quite frankly, probably harder than strict pull-ups. I was like, all right, that's cool, I'll do that. And then, it is all during the warm-up, what popped into my head, another modification of Ryan, and I guess my point is that I allow myself these indulgences, if you will. I allow myself the wide strike zone and the creativity to, I'm still keeping with the stimulus of the workout. You know, okay, I'm, I'm taking out the ring muscle-ups, but I'm still going to get in some sort of a pull. I'm still involving the rings. I haven't strayed too far, but I'm allowing myself some creativity to play with something, to experience it, to feel it, to categorize it, I mean, to log it in my brain, see whether I liked it or didn't like it, to then use in the future or not use in the future. So I said, okay, we're going to do ring rows. I have my feet up on a box, and that'll be great. And then I said, all right, well, I do my ring rows normal with a normal grip, but what if I did ring rows and I kept the false grip the entire time? That would probably be even more challenging and more taxing on the grip. Some nice variance compared to the ring muscle-ups or the low ring muscle-ups, and that would make the ring row even harder. Great, done. So now I'm going to do seven per round, feet in the box, keeping the false grip the entire time. That'll help build some, some grip strength and even mimic the original movement even better. And then I thought, okay, here's one more thing that we can do in the wonderful name of variance and experimentation. At the top of the ring row with a false grip, when I get my hands to the sides of my chest, which is very similar to what you would do if you were pulling through on the ring muscle-up, instead of just, you know, touching it and going right back down in the next rep, when I feel that contact hand on the side of my chest, I have to hold it there for a 1-1000. One, one then I can go ahead and go back down. And I was like, okay, I like that. That's going to be miserable, but a beautiful kind of miserable. So that was the decision that was made for the pull. Ring row, false grip, feet elevated on a box, um, a slight static hold at the top of each repetition. Great. Burpees are still going to be regular burpees. But I'm not going to lie to you, I wasn't going to sweat the one-foot jump. Like I said, I just wasn't feeling like I had a lot of wizard pepper today, if you know what I mean, yesterday. And I was still going to do 105 burpees no matter what. So then I said, okay, that, that takes care of the pull. But obviously on the ring dip, we've got a, a press out at the top. So I've got to do something, because that's also some beautiful interference, you know, intentionally with the workout, Ryan. So what can I do there? And things that rolled into my head, I was like, okay, well... Negatives. Negatives are cool, right? We don't work those into a workout too frequently. So for some wonderful variants, maybe I will do seven each round. I will allow myself, so it'll be seven ring rows in a row, then seven dips in a row. And it's like, okay, maybe I'll do a jump up to the locked out position, the top of the ring dip, and a slow negative down to the bottom. Jump up to extension, slow negative down, and do that for seven reps each round. And I was like, I like that. That's going to be nasty, again, in a good way. So maybe that's that's the play. So as I was doing my warm-up, head still didn't shut off. And then I said, you know what? I, I'm going to switch it up again. Again, I'm going to allow myself to experiment, allow myself to be creative, allow myself to, to try something even at the end of the workout, maybe it's not the greatest idea, but that's how you learn. There's no learning that occurs without mistakes, and they're not all going to be beautiful. So I said, all right, I'm not going to do the negatives. Here's what I'm going to do. At the top, I'm going to extend up 
and excuse me, just once, and then instead of doing seven ring dips or seven negatives each round, I want to hold the top locked out position of a ring dip for 20 seconds. So just a static hold at the top of the ring dip. You know, that there's some variance there. I couldn't tell the last time I did that in a workout. And so that's kind of what I settled on. So in place of the muscle ups, each round I would do seven ring rows, feet elevated on a box with a false grip. And when my hands touch my chest in the false grip, static hold for like a one 1,000 per rep. And then I would do a 20 second hold per round at the top of the ring dip. So over the course of five rounds, that would get me 100 seconds of a static hold. It's almost two minutes of a static hold at the top of the ring dip. And I had a feeling that even if that wasn't challenging in round number one, by the time that round number five came to a close, I would not feel shortchanged. So that's how I did the workout, and I'm here to tell you I was not shortchanged <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. I preserved the stimulus of the workout, push, bit of a pull, same musculature involved, interference, the whole nine yards, but it was a little bit different, but not wildly different. And since it was just a little bit different, it wasn't quote-unquote prescribed, and that also helped my mental state <clears throat> since, again, I wasn't feeling overly fired up yesterday. And so if I do an as-prescribed Ryan, and then I go ahead and look at the previous time I had for Ryan, it's a one-to-one -one comparison. I knew right off the bat I was going to do it casually, so my time was going to be slower. All of a sudden, I'm not feeling good. That, that weird thing that CrossFitters get into their head and spiral out of control. I wanted to avoid that. So I avoided it step one by not running the clock, and I avoided it step two with modifying the, the movements just, just a little bit. So then that got my head working during the workout things popped into my head. So this is the, the conversation that I have with myself while I'm doing the workout, feeling what it feels like. And I kind of felt like, you know what, the Ryan workout, five rounds for time, seven ring muscle-ups, 21 burpees to a one-foot target uh, above your reach. Beautiful workout in and of itself, and a grind in and of itself. I said, man, this workout is almost screaming to be an interval. Because how, I mean, you're going to settle in. If you're doing 35 ring muscle-ups and 105 burpees, having to jump one foot after each time, you're settling into a non-sprint pace, which is fine. There's obviously a need for that. <clears throat> but it almost would lend itself so beautifully to, instead of being five rounds for time, what if it was five intervals, each for time, of seven ring muscle-ups and 21 burpees to a one-foot jump, one-to-one -one work rest ratio or rest a few minutes between each, you know, whatever the rest kind of turned out to be intelligently, that would allow you to keep a pace on those burpees as an interval that there's no way that you could keep in a regular just Ryan workout. And that's not that one workout is better or than the other workout. They're just different depending upon what you needed that day. But Ryan, I was like, oh, that's laid out beautifully for interval. Then I thought, okay, the burpees to a one-foot jump are some great variants that few people ever do. But then we could also have a beautiful interval-style Ryan. Instead of the one-foot jump, they're bar-facing burpees. So five intervals each for time, seven ring muscle-ups, 21 bar-facing burpees, a few minutes rest between each. Great. Or you could do burpee box jump overs. Those would work really well also. So all of them are good. I then thought for a second... But what if you flip-flopped, and these, these are all thoughts I'm having during the workout, what if you flip-flopped it for the intervals? So instead of having the interval be the seven ring muscle-ups and then the 21 burpees, what if an interval was 21 burpees and then seven ring muscle-ups? And again, this is the interesting thing about programming being science and art. It's not that one's right or wrong, but in my, in my opinion, most of the time that would be a worse decision for most athletes unless it was a very intentional thing that you were doing which hopefully all of your programming is intentional because for most people ring muscle-ups are tough enough just just by themselves so sticking 20 it, this is interval style 
sticking 21 burpees before seven ring muscle-ups, if you're doing intervals, is going to cause most human beings to just have to break up the ring muscle-ups far more than they would have had to slow the athlete down, etc., etc. So for an interval, I would say putting the more challenging movement first, like the ring muscle-up, works well, and then you end the interval with the 21 burpees, which is a much less complex, much less technically demanding movement than the ring muscle-ups, and something that the athlete can really drop the hammer and empty the tank for each interval, knowing that they're going to get a rest period, and that will allow them to just depress that gas pedal and get that punch, and they might not get that interval feel if we had the burpees first and the ring muscle-ups second, because most people will probably be like, well... I'm not really going to send it on the burpees because if I do, I've got seven ring muscle-ups just lingering at the end of this interval and I'm going to be just staring at the rings. So, again, now, this is why there's art and science, right? But that's not always the case. Let's say that you had an athlete who ring muscle-ups are just their strength. I mean, they are amazing at them. You just can't seem to fatigue this athlete with ring muscle-ups. Well, for that athlete, it might make a lot of sense to set up some interval work, put the burpees first, put the ring muscle-ups last, and intentionally make them, for that athlete, really challenging ring muscle-ups. And then you could also do it, we can go down rabbit holes, right? Well, should I add a weight vest to this precious little workout that we're talking about, this interval-style workout? Maybe, maybe every now and then, but probably not as frequently as one would think. Overwhelmingly, I would say no. Overwhelmingly. For most people, I would say, if we're talking about the interval style workout, seven ring muscle-ups, followed by 21 burpees, five intervals, a few minutes rest between each interval, all your, you know, with an interval style workout, I'm looking to allow the athlete a wonderful opportunity to express intensity and move at a pace that is substantially faster than they would be able to normally maintain in a multi-round consecutive workout. And so now, breaking up the workout, putting in some pre-planned rest, gives the athlete the opportunity to do that, and now adding something like the weight vest, maybe, although some great variants, all I now did was once again slow down the athlete that I was intending to speed up. That doesn't apply to every athlete in every single solitary situation. There are certainly some athletes, again, so profoundly capable at both of those movements that they can do them at a breakneck, redline, sprint pace, and a little bit of a weight vest would be a great appropriate challenge for that person. But for most regular human beings walking the earth, even really darn fit athletes, they don't need to throw a weight fest on that workout to make it plenty challenging. That that would be my kind of two cents on that. Um, I just had something I was going to... This is why I write things down. I just had something. It, just, it was just gone. I would also say... So that popped into my head with um, Ryan. But, you know, there's so many beautiful workouts out there that you can... There's inspiration everywhere. And there's a lot of workouts that are made as multi-round workouts, made as chippers, some of them have done interval style, and they already exist, you can get inspiration from those. So think, for example, all these four or five workouts are kind of doing the same thing, kind of, but they do it in a different way. And again, that doesn't mean that one is better or worse than another. It doesn't mean that one is more effective or less effective than another. They're just five different tools that you have in your toolbox, and the right tool that day will depend upon your needs that day as a programmer. When you looked backwards and you saw what you had done recently, where you had been, and that also illuminates where you have not been and therefore where you should go. So, for example, think of the workout Angie. 100 pull-ups, 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 100 squats. Beautiful workout. Huge chunks of work done chipper style. And if you haven't done Angie in a while, that's a, an incredible workout. And that will, in very short order, let you know if you have been avoiding some things in your life. I mean, opening up with a set of 100 pull-ups, wow. And then anyone who does 
actual, real, beautiful, honest push-ups. Not junky push-ups, but like bodies ramrod straight the entire time. You never lose your midline. Everything touches the ground at the bottom. Not comes really close to the ground, but actually really touches the ground. Then you extend your arms all the way to a full lockout on every single repetition. Not kind of close to extending your elbows, but actually truly extend your arms on every rep. And you're not like pecking with your chin, trying to just have your chin touch the ground. You're doing beautiful push-ups. A set of 100 is not a laughing matter. And it will, it will suddenly have you questioning your fitness. So Angie is a beast. Angie's fantastic. And it, big chipper, a lot of volume, big sets. And there's a time and place for that. But you obviously are going to, Angie would be a, a faster and a, if you're doing a workout faster, you're going to be generating more intensity. Andy would be a fast, Angie, a faster, more intense workout if instead of four sets of 100 of each one of those things, you did five rounds for time of 20 of each. Five rounds for time, 20 pull-ups, 20 push-ups, 20 sit-ups, 20 air squats. By the end of the day, you're going to get in the exact same overall amount of work in Angie, but you will have accomplished it in a different way and arguably one that will allow most athletes to move faster. So if you're doing the same amount of work in less time, more power, more intensity, and we know intensity is a critical factor to producing our fitness and driving us forward, so the question becomes, well, then why wouldn't I do it that way all the time? If it's a quote-unquote higher power producing or more intense workout, I should do that all the time. Eh. No, again, that's the art and science thing. You shouldn't do it all the time. I may agree to the statement that you should do it most of the time, but not necessarily all of the time, because life doesn't play by those rules either. And sometimes life isn't going to break things up into wonderful little manageable chunks. You might just have massive gobs of repetitive work, and you can't move on to the next task until you complete one of them. And so for the sake of variance... You know, subjecting yourself to chippers every now and then, like Angie, have tremendous value, and we need to do that to be well-rounded athletes. So you've got Angie. You've got all those body weight movements. You're kind of doing the same thing with Barbara. You're adding some sit-ups in there. Excuse me, I'm, uh, you're not adding sit-ups, but the volume's different is what I meant to say. So on Barbara, we're going to do those same four movements, pull-ups, push-ups, sit-ups, and squats, but now we're doing it interval style. Barbara's five intervals, each for time, 20 pull-ups, 30 push-ups, 40 sit-ups, 50 air squats. Barbara is a beast and one of my favorites. Accomplishing kind of the same thing as Andy, Angie, but you're doing it differently and you're getting a bit more volume. And so now you could take, you've got Angie, you've got Barbara, and then you also have Cindy. Now we're not talking about sit-ups and Cindy, <clears throat> but pull-ups, push-ups, and squats, a small number of repetitions set to a 20-minute AMRAP, so we're not setting the work. Then you've got Chelsea, where we're going to take one round of Cindy, and you're just going to hold it EMOM style for 30 minutes, if you potentially can. And then we could also have the Tabata workouts, which involve all these movements as well, but we're doing them in 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest. So you've got all these different things as the programmer, which are you know, they're all related, they're all very similar, but they're getting to the end point in a different way. And again, neither one's better or worse, it just depends on what makes sense that day, and they all have value. Do you need huge big chunks of work like Angie? Do you need small chunks of work and just see how far you can get like Cindy? Is it time to do some interval work? Well, let's throw Barbara in there. There's all kinds of fantastic stuff. And you should keep those all in your head. And you can also take, as I looked at Ryan and thought that it worked really well for an interval, you can take other classic benchmarks and just chop them up if need be. You know, so one that pops into my mind as well is Elizabeth. So Elizabeth, 21.15.9, cleans and ring dips, right? 135 pounds for the men, 95 pounds for the women. Some people will do Elizabeth with power cleans. How dare you? I'm joking, obviously. 
you know, just kind of says cleans. You'll see, people, you'll see people do a little bit of power cleans and full clean squat cleans. We're going to go ahead and say that you do Elizabeth most of the time with squat cleans because why wouldn't you? Most human beings, okay, even quite fit ones, aren't going to just sit there and do unbroken 21, 15, 9 squat cleans at 135 pounds or 95 pounds. You know, there's going to be fast singles. There's going to be some small chunks as the workout goes on. That set of, however you attack the set of 21, the set of 15 is going to be rugged. Beautiful workout. Awesome workout, Elizabeth. You could take Elizabeth and do it interval style and have a fantastic workout there. So with a 21-15-9, you're getting 45 reps of each. What if you did three intervals of 15 and 15? So three intervals, each for time, 15 full cleans, 135 or 95, and the ring dips, one to one work rest ratio or two to one work rest ratio between each. Sets of 15 each time, dirty, nasty, but beautiful and valuable. What if also, let's chop it down even a little smaller, because even sets of 15 for a lot of folks, that's a big set of squat cleans, especially in the second interval, the third interval. What if we did five intervals of nine and nine? And in the five intervals of nine and nine, what if we intentionally flipped it around put the ring dips first, even though that's not the order in Elizabeth, and put the squat clean second. And maybe the reason that we would do that is you hit the ring dips fresh, try to get that set of nine knocked out, and then you know I've got nine squat cleans left in this interval, and I'm going to get a couple minutes rest after this. And it's just this beautiful little single digit. It's a nine. It's not a 10 or 12 or 15. It's a nine. And maybe there's that beautiful pressure to hold on to the barbell that you maybe normally wouldn't do, obviously assuming that you can move safely and just touch and go nine squat cleans each time. And then maybe, depending upon whether the, where that falls into the um, easy or not easy for you, you play with the rest interval. Did you hold on to the nine, but it was really miserable and hard? Take a significant rest interval, multiple minutes, whatever you need, so that you can go back and try to do it again in intervals two, three, four, and five. Was it hard but bearable? You're like, okay, that was a stinger, but I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Shorten that rest interval. Maybe you take one minute worth of rest. Maybe you take 30 seconds worth of rest, whatever it happens to be, and you can play with it that way. I guess long story short, there's all kinds of beautiful experimentation and playing that you can do with either workouts that you create out of thin air or workouts that already exist and you look at them and you derive inspiration from whatever you happen to see. But you know, the world is your oyster. But these are all random thoughts that popped into my head yesterday as I was warming up for Ryan and then during the Ryan workout. And since people always enjoy chatting about programming, I figured I'd share them. So that's it. I'm going to dive into emails and enjoy my coffee. Everybody out there have a great day, and as always, we will talk later.